ominous, it's mysterious, and then it also lures you in as a viewer. It's kind of attractive to watch. There's that duality of like, I'm attracted to this, but at the same time, I know it's dangerous. So you build a world that you'd like to kind of explore. And first I want to describe this world. This is a world that I hadn't been in before, but this characters and this weird drawings that I made. How do you balance the work and life? The work and life is going to be tested this year, I guess. Hey, Marcus. Hey, Jamie. How are you? I'm very good, thanks. How are you? Good. Thank you. Well, yeah, how was your day? Uh, it was good. Finishing some work stuff. So, yeah, I've been in front of the computer. Do you find yourself in front of the computer all day, every day? Well, I have a five-month five baby now. Oh, so congratulations. I, yeah, not so much anymore. So, oh, I have yeah. a good reason to take a break. <laughs> yeah, well, my name is Marcos Sanchez. I live in Chile, Santiago, and I'm an independent animator. Recently, I've been doing a lot of music videos and a short film. I've been getting really into animation. I'm also a visual artist, so that's how I started, I guess. It's painting and drawing, and I still do that, but just very recently, I've been doing a lot of animation. So your first music video that you made, how did you get that gig? Did you want to challenge yourself, like, I want to do a music video, I'll do animation? I contacted a, f a bunch of bands at one point that I liked. I contacted uh, Dealproof, this band, I don't know if you know him, they're from the US. The guitar player from that band, uh, his name is John, he did the music for this for the short film that we're going to talk oh, about brilliant. later. Yeah, he replied, you know, said, oh, let's do something together at some point. So I ended up doing a music video for his, one of his side projects. I guess because we couldn't shoot the band or anything because I was in Chile and they were in the US. So what I did is I took a, a bunch of random footage from online and drew on top of that. So that was the first music video I did. And then after that one, John also called me because he was producing Claire Cronin's album. She's a folk singer and she needed a music video. So I went into full animation for that one. Then after that video, uh, Kim Deal from The Breeders. The Gorillas? No, The Breeders. Oh, sorry. I thought you said Gorillas. I thought, what was that? I'm not familiar with the British. They're a 90s band and the lead singer in that band was part of the Pixies. Yeah, I know the Pixies. So, that, so I did a music video for them. And then after that, yeah, I got a bunch of people asking for music videos like that. Was that also 2D on footage? Was that kind of your signature style for music videos? Yeah, I've, yeah. I actually done four music videos on that style, I think. I really like that style because it's kind of liberating. All this work is part of also the work of the musicians that I work with. They've trusted me a lot. I've never done a music video where they've asked me anything. So I'm really glad that, that the music videos I've made are, have been really, have felt like personal work or collaborations more than commissions. Do they ever sort of make any crazy changes or do they just literally enjoy and, and embrace everything that you, you do? Yeah, most of the time it's just, they just receive it and they like it most of the time. One one time, uh, the band just wanted it to go further, which was fine, which was fine for me. And that case, it was a really violent theme, so they wanted more violence. More blood, more go, more yeah, guts. Yeah, exactly. Which music video is that one, Marcos? Uh, you Just Can't Win. It's a metal band from California. They're called All Souls. The story is about the killings in the United States, so... Oh, right. But they were completely right, because they wanted the violence to be more impactful, and I think they were right. The footage that you use, some of it shaky, low res, old footage, is that more challenging to do than smooth, high res footage? Yeah, I know, but I know it's really low res. And I, I mean, some of those videos are like 320 by 240. To me, it's more comfortable to intervene that footage because it's, I guess you can, it's already, since it already looks bad, you can just do a lot. And it seems to me like the animation can be, doesn't have to be that perfect if the footage is already not perfect. I was I was thinking, oh, Marcus likes a challenge here with sh any shaky footage and tracking like 2D. I thought, is he, is he sort of thinking, this is more challenging, I'm going to go for that. The shots that have movement and like that are more kind of challenging to work on usually look better because you're not used to like having, like seeing animation integrated into that kind of shot. True, so, that's interesting. So whenever I see a shot like that, of course, 
like I'd say, okay, this one, I, I know it's going to be hard, but it's going to be like a highlight and then I can do it like simpler ones. I really enjoyed the smoke on the skateboard on one of the pieces with all the smoke effects and stuff. That's so cool. Yeah, thank you. Obviously, you've got a lot of character stuff and, and, and 2D effects. You know, which ones do you enjoy doing the most? So when I do effects, I like it because it's kind of relaxing and, and the movement of the smoke, if you get it right, it's kind of, you, it's, it's really enjoyable to watch. Yeah, and satisfying to watch. It's very yeah. satisfying to but watch. It took me a while to get it to move like, kind of smoothly. I, I had a friend that was working with me one of those and since I've been doing that much more than him, I had to kind of explain to him how I figured it out, how to make it move slowly and yeah, it was hard to explain. But I enjoyed both. I think sometimes actually the abstract stuff leads to the characters in a way. The transformations are really interesting to see of the characters. I'm looking at a clip now of the lady and the man running um, on that sort of plank into the water yeah. and he transforms into like a devil demon character type thing. I guess this is quite, you know, included in your artwork itself. You know, use of negative space, which obviously is used a lot in the piece that we're going to talk about, uh, something in the garden. Personally, I'm a big lover of cats, Marco. So the opening shot really, really hurt. I've heard that comment more than once. Uh, yeah. Can you just give us a little sort of background about the project, how it came about and the inspiration to do that? How it came about, it was very kind of naturally. I started drawing these characters, not knowing that I was going to make a short film. And this, this character of this log came out first because I had already uh, done a character like that in one of those music videos and I wanted to explore it more. It's really um, a very personal project, I guess, that I kind of understood as I was making it. Kind of the same way I think the, the people that watch, watch it experience it. Like, what is this? Why am I watching this? And it's more like a mood piece in a way. Yeah, like an atmosphere than a very developed story. And I like that. Yeah, it kind of grew in the same way in my head. It's really interesting because as we were watching it for the first time, I felt as a viewer, what's going on here? It's ominous. It's mysterious. And then it also lures you in as a viewer. You feel that you could almost be consumed by this creature. That's the way I felt when I was watching it. I do that, that kind of in purpose. But I like to make something where it's kind of attractive to watch. And you kind of like, if, if this was a piece of work, you would be like, yeah, I that's mean, exactly what I was doing. Like the flowers and the movement of like soft movement of things and yeah. quietness that puts you in a state of, yeah, I want to be in this space, even though it's ominous or creepy, but it, it kind of feels good. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it's the, it's the pacing. The music also. Oh, the music. Yeah, definitely. Let's talk about the music. When I talked to John about how the music should be, we said, like, let's not make it creepy. The music is not creepy, it's kind of dreamy. It complements what's going on in the story and there's that, like, duality of, like, this, I'm attracted to this, but at the same time, I know it's dangerous. Those are shots that really hold, not uncomfortably longer, but long, long enough to make you really go, what am I looking at here, you know, and then that's that feeling of leaning forward into the frame as a viewer. Yeah. You yeah. Know, so the pacing of it really helps, especially the shot where, um, you know, this creature's just crawling across the frame, crawls for a longer and another crawl. And you think, what's what's happening? What's and then it stops and it's still there, like, sometimes. In software wise, Marcus, can you just talk about your choice? When I did this, I was in between changing software. So I actually did part of it in Toon Boom did part of it in TV Paint and a little, like one or two sequences in Open Tools, free software for 2D animation. So yeah, but I actually did a lot of those in or Big Bird. Oh, cool. Does this work as a, a flip book? Is there an order? Yes. Let me see. I don't know if it's kind of, I think it's Oh, great, man. So yeah, I did a lot of it in on paper. And then I started this in like 2000. 18 or something, the first drawing. So in the middle of the process, I got a tablet. So I finished so drawing some of them digitally, but the first ones were drawn, drawn and cleaned up on paper. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's the moment where they get zapped. Yeah, that's a close up. See, th those moments, are, uh, you know, the, the contrast of 
You know when you're curious about something and you and it's all silent and you're lured in and then it zaps you and you go oh and then but then also you're still curious to like go back yeah like the jump scares that they where do you get your sort of inspiration for like character design is it all in your head comic books I I really like Daniel Falls he's a like American comic book artist and it's not really that similar but there's also Mi- Miyazaki oh yeah. It's not that I'm a huge, I mean, of course he's great, but it's not that I'm being a huge fan of this or seeing all these movies. Not, but I really love the careful detail of it and uh, the idea that you that you can look digital, but it's you can still feel like a really delicate kind of handcrafted quality to the draw. When I first drew this kind of blob, to me it was a kind of a joke on a old children's show that that used to play here in Chile. It's a Bel- Belgian show called Barba Baba. i mentioned this in many places, but the only people that I've seen that recognize them are Canadian or French or here in <laughs> Chile. Oh, really? Yeah. And, yeah. But they were these uh, creatures for kids, you know, that they are, they're like blobs. It would be a family and they would turn into whatever they wanted. So if someone needed, I don't know, a fork, his arm would turn into a fork. Or okay. a stair. Some of them would turn into a stair. The other one would go up. It's a little like Adventure Time, Jake. Do you know Adventure Time? Yeah. Like Jake the dog, how he sort of transforms into all sorts of weird and wonderful shapes yeah. and creatures. Yeah, but this is from the, I guess it's from the 80s or 70s. Is it? Like, Are you um, a He-Man fan by any chance? Oh, yeah, yeah. there's the He-Man there, yeah. Can, can you talk the- about the He-Man, especially with the one arm? I, when I was drawing the room of the character, I just drew it as the room I had at, when I was that age. Oh, uh-huh, great. I was good. I was just looking at the frame now. So we've got the rest, like a wrestling mask, He-Man toy. It's an old computer. That's great. And it's the, the detail of, you know, the missing arm, because when you're playing with figurines and like wrestling figures and monsters and the arms are going to come off or the leg is yeah. going to be broke. Out of interest, are you working on any other personal projects at the moment? I've been working on ideas, but not really on... Like I haven't started animating anything, but I have ideas and I, not that I'm waiting for it, but I'm trying to get funding for the new project. There's a bunch of grants that you can get here. I mean, that you can apply for it. So I'm applying with, for some, but only in idea form, like written, but I haven't really started one yet. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it soon. I'm really. And you started on this last piece back in 2018, just drawing like something on paper. And then you draw something else and then you piece it together. Potentially, this could be the same case where you put something down, store it, put something else down, and then kind of bring it together to make a, a piece. There's something really nice about working that way, I think. So, at least, I guess it's because when you start with the visuals, you know that the story it's going to be interesting because it's a thing that you haven't seen before and that it's really attractive to me. Like, this is a world that I haven't been in before. I'll see what the story is, but first I want to describe this world with these characters and this weird drawing that I made. So you build a world that you'd like to kind of explore and like you come up with a character that you want to ask questions of what's the origin of this worm or this creature and where does it live? Why is it there? And then I guess yeah. that develops story on top of a smaller idea. Yeah, totally. Just moving back on to... Uh, you know, that 2D on top of footage. When I see 2D on top of live action, I think Who Framed Roger Rabbit from when I was younger, 1988, that was one of my childhood favorite movies. For sure. I love that movie when I watched it as a kid too. And it still looks great today, I I, I have feel. to watch it again. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. You have seen it? Have you seen it recently? I, I think I watched it about a year ago. You know, very nostalgic to watch anyway. But now with a more trained eye, it still impressed me to this day. And to think way back then, the process, the workflow. And at the time, hadn't really been done to that level before on a feature film. Very, you know, groundbreaking in itself. Yeah, for the whole for the whole length of the movie. Yeah. Space Jam, the first one? You know, not really, because I didn't really see it. I was too, I guess I was, I felt I was too old for that movie when it, when it played. And because oh, I was really? a teenager, I guess. Well, the, the second one, the new one, don't waste your time, Marcos, really? watching that. Yeah, it's not it's not great. I mean, it visually looks quite fun, but... But the first one is worth it. First one is fun, you know. And I haven't watched it recently, though, but when I was a kid, Space Jam, for me, was an absolute blast. And, of course, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You mentioned earlier that you've now got a child, five-month-old child. You know, you juggle a lot of ideas and, and skill sets. How do you 
balance the work and life? Well, work and life, it's, it's going to be a, it's going to be tested this year, I guess. I accept that I have to take one project and spend some time there and forget about the other one. And then when I come back to the other one, I guess I get more excited and, and finish it. I don't, I don't, know if it, I don't think it's a good thing that I'm saying. It might be much better to just focus on something for a long time and then have, you know, a feature film done, which is amazing. I don't know how people do that because I get really distracted. I don't really know if I do the balance that well. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I think I'm quite similar in the way that, especially with a creative mind, there's no right or wrong way of doing it. We spoke recently to, you may have seen her work actually. Her name's Sarah. She's an Icelandic filmmaker in 2D. She does a lot of 2D work. Yeah, she's, I know, she's the one that did um, a year of d***s. Exactly, yes. You might year of d***s. Have you seen that? Yeah, I did, yeah, I did. It's great. Well, we, we spoke to her recently about balance and taking breaks from work. And she said she would work, 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 work. But now that she's got a daughter, she has to, t- she has to take breaks. Well, in her case, it's only, yeah, more intense. I actually think I did meet her at South by Southwest. Oh, really? Like, ran in briefly. Did you win an award at South by Southwest I did, for yeah. one of your shows? Congratulations on that. Which which one was that? It was a jury recognition. Oh, congratulations. Man. Yeah, it was great. Thank you. So, you know, it's just interesting to hear how, how different people tackle different projects. Sometimes you can get lost if you're picking from a bunch of different things and get lost in, like, doing something that maybe is not as such a great idea or such a good thing. You know, sometimes it's good to realize, okay, this is, and it's and the other way too, like something is good and it could be taken further. So just stay there and keep doing it. Don't try to switch to a completely different thing too soon because you might be missing something interesting that can pop up, just keeping, pushing the same button for a little bit at least. For a, an animator, a creative, you always want to give more because you're passionate and you love what you do. You know, you can't help but want to make things the best that they can be, you know? Yeah, I guess that's a sign when you're happy working on something, for sure. If it's animation or whatever, like if you really want to put something extra, it means that you're doing the right job for you. One final question, Marcus. Any tips, advice for anybody getting into the world of animation? When I was doing something right out of school, I was working with a friend and we, we used to think that we were doing like too much work for something that didn't really need it thinking this could be done easier or in a more in a simpler way. And I think it's always good to try to push yourself and do like things in a not in a conventional way or not the way that it's supposed to be made or like yeah, like just to try to make your work unique and yours. That's something I think is worth mentioning from my experience of this. Well, Marcos, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you and I just want to say thank you for your time. Now, thank you for your interest in the work and your nice questions. All the best and we'll speak to you very soon. Thanks again. Thank you. You too. Take care, Marcos. Bye-bye.